Okay, so on page 28, we've got an example of a coaching agreement. Now, I say this is just an example, and, you know, your agreement will be different depending on the country that you're in, depends on the state that you're in, and obviously also depends on, you know, wh which organizations you might belong to. So, it's just an example. So, please don't copy this verbatim. Uh, see how it needs to be edited, and so that the coaching agreement is a legal agreement that you can use with your clients. So the example here is, this is agreement between me, uh, the client, and the coachee. So the person who I'm coaching is the coachee, and the client is the person who's going to be paying for the coachee to be coached. Now they might be the same person, uh, most often they are, and of course it could be different where the client might be the large organization who's paying for a manager to be coached who will be the coachee. So I think in the description there we're talking about what is coaching and so really defining you know what is the client there for and what are we going to offer them. Then the responsibilities so me as a coach I maintain the code of ethics and the standards of behavior set out by the ICF and I've just put a link through there so that my client can go and find more information if they wanted to. Number two, the client is responsible for creating and implementing their own physical, mental and emotional well-being, their decisions, choices, actions and results. So as such, the client agrees that the coach is not and will not be liable for any actions or inaction or for any direct or indirect results of any services provided by the coach. So the client understands coaching is not therapy and it does not substitute for therapy. And, you know, it doesn't prevent or cure or treat any mental disorders or medical diseases. The client also understands that coaching is not to be used as a substitute for professional advice, where be it legal, mental, medical, or other professional advice. So again, using the example I did earlier about the financial advisor, or a client maybe that needs to get a business plan written, we as the coach don't offer that advice. We don't write the client's business plan. The client needs to go and get that done by themselves. So we might refer the client to somebody, but it's not for the coach to actually tell the client what to do. And it's really important to box that off so the client knows exactly where they stand. What are the responsibilities of the coach? What are the responsibilities of the client? I also expect my client to communicate with me honestly, to be open to feedback, and, you know, to put in fully the energy that's needed when we are within the coaching sessions. And so, how many sessions are we going to have? When are they going to be? What time are they going to be? Now, this will vary from client to client. But let's say I have a, a business coaching client. We might start off with a 12-week program. And it's going to cost X amount per session each session maybe lasts an hour. Uh, do we have the sessions weekly? Do we have it more on a when you need me type situation? Uh, that's something that corporate clients like now and then. You know, they might not be specifically available on certain days every week. And so they, they'll they ask, you know, this week can I see you that day? You know, or can we wait for two weeks and then put the appointment on that day? And so it just depends from client to client. Also, of course, you know, what are going to be the fees? You know, how much do you charge per session? Do you charge per session? Do you charge monthly? Do you charge hourly? Okay, under the procedure, so we say the time of the coaching meetings and the location will be determined by the coach and the client based on mutually agreed time. Uh, I do most of my sessions via Skype. So, do you do them via Skype? Do you do them by phone call? If it is a phone call, who's going to phone who? So, who's paying the bill? Uh, you know, when are you going to meet? What times are you going to meet? Of course, confidentiality. So, the coaching relationship, as well as all the information that the client shares with the coach, is going to be confidential. However, it's not the same confidentiality as legally or 
you know, between a doctor and a, and a client. So if I was to be called to court, let's say I had a client who came to me and said, you know what, I want to be coached on the best way to rob a bank. You might be in a position where you fear for your life. And so therefore you're going to coach the client. However, afterwards you can go to the police and you can say, look, this client of mine wants to go rob a bank. It's just a, a slightly far-fetched example. But suffice it to say that it, although the sessions are confidential, they don't carry the same set of confidentiality uh, rules. And so, you know, again, if I was working with a client maybe that was being, let's say it was a child that was being abused or a child that was being, uh, you know, hurt in some way, then this gray area, I might be uh, go talking to the police or to child services, etc. Okay, but that's a decision and a, and a judgment call, really. I've also added a box in there where I say, please note as part of continual development and keeping track of coaching hours, the coach may submit the client's email address to the ICF. The coach won't divulge any other information about what happened during the session. Uh, you know, the information is strictly limited to an email address. And that's just to track my coaching hours. Again, that may or may not be of interest to you. It might be something you have in your, uh, your agreement or not. I also have a cancellation and lateness policy. So the client agrees that if the client's responsibility to notify the coach at least 24 hours in advance of the scheduled meeting that they might not be able to make the session. If the client misses a session, then they still build. Again, this probably depends on whether you are billing monthly in advance, are you billing monthly in arrears, are you doing it after each session, you know, however your billing works. For business coaching, I prefer to be billing either monthly in advance or, you know, at the end of the month. But if the client has made that session and they didn't cancel it, then it's still your time. You were still there waiting for the client. Your time has been allocated, and I think it's important to be paid for that. But that, again, is a judgment call, and that's from client, from coach to coach and client to client. Also, if my client doesn't turn up, I'll wait for 15 minutes, and if the client doesn't turn up within 15 minutes, then also I might count that as a, as a no-show. Of course, again, just depends on the particular client and the relationship that you might have with them. Next termination. Either the client or the coach may terminate this agreement within a two-week written notice. This will be totally dependent on what you decide to put in your coaching agreement. I think two weeks is fair. However, if my client doesn't want to work with me, I'm actually more than happy for my client to cancel immediately uh, because why do I want to work with somebody who doesn't work with me? and vice versa. You know, I don't want to force somebody to be in a coaching relationship with me if I'm not producing results. Then just some limited liability. So except and expressly provided in this agreement, the coach makes no guarantees or warranties, express or implied. In no event will the coach be liable to the client for consequential or special damages. And you know, you'll have your own indemnity insurances Make sure what's necessary for you to be putting into your coaching agreement and, of course, you know what you need to put in for your particular state or country. So that's just an uh, example of what a coaching agreement might look like. And, of course, you can edit it and tweak it the way that you need to.